Take okay, one. Okay. And then, no, that goes on the bottom. Okay. So I'm turning it this way, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go to the house. I don't need to almost go to the house. Yeah, that's more.
to another edition of the Vicky Romero Show. Today I'm here with two wonderful, interesting guests, Mr. Cyril Grant and Ms. Michelle Jones, and we're going to be talking about family business, family business, here at Red Lion Bakery in King Tom. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. I think the most important thing is because this place is so old, mm -hmm. people want to know how have you been able to keep it all together? Um, yes, it's, uh, it was built in 1948, uh, number 13, which is probably an unlucky number, but for us lucky. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are the third generation and um, our grandmother started the business uh, in 1944. We built this in 1948, but we moved back in 2014 and we've managed to repair paint uh, and kept it up to date. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle, tell mm -hmm. me about how your grandmother got started in the bread business. Yes, um, well, uh, basically, like all businesses, or family businesses, I should say, it really started out of a, a need, a necessity. She had um, six children uh, and back in, in, the, in the midst of the, of the World War II, <laughs> such or something. World War II. She found herself in 1944 with six children, and her husband, who was a police officer at the time, came home with one loaf of bread. And she says, "Well, this will not work. This will not feed a family. I mean, of six, uh, six children, herself, her husband, and a housekeeper." And she decided to bake bread. She started baking bread in a pot, and um, the first few tries were soggy or hard. And she kept up. She she didn't uh, give up, as her mantra later became, "Never give up." Um, if at first you don't succeed, try again. <laughs> she tried again, and. On her third attempt, she was successful and with joy, she took the loaves that she had baked to the community and the police officer, because they lived in the um, King Tom police barracks at that time, the police officers were asking her for more. Like, you know, we're talking in, in 1944 mm -hmm. and they were rationing bread and you, you can imagine and everything else, they wanted more bread. And so that's how she started to bake bread, one after the, t um, you know, in a pot and lit uh, basically my grandfather, um, also recognize that this now has become a community thing. Um, I think in 1944 this started, but they moved here in 1948, and by that time he had secured this land, purchased um, an oven, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's how it became, quote, big business later on. Okay. But um, it started off small um, and developed into what it is today. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. tell me about what the product lines were in the beginning, oh, so back then when it was first like this emerging business, mm -hmm. to where your product lines are now, like, uh, bre like how has it changed over time, basically? Um, I don't think it has changed. It has, substantially. not substantially, but it has, yeah. It was considered mainly of fresh bread, just plain white bread okay. in those days. There were no specialty uh, bread. That did not come around until I think it was 1978 Probably, yeah. that we uh, made the croissant and, croissant and then malt followed. Um, yeah, so we basically were living on uh, or producing rather um, plain white bread um, and then later I think Maybe brown bread came before croissant. Even. Yeah, around, yeah. Maybe brown bread came before croissant. But um, the selections were not that great. And like I said, with um, in the 70s when we when she secured that property on uh, where we are right now today at, at um, the corner of Shaker Stevens Street and Wellington Street, then all these innovations started. We had a croissant, we had malt, and today we've diversified a bit. We've st still stick with just bread, 
<laughs> we don't make tarts and pastries and all that stuff. It's just bread. We really pride ourselves on being bread makers and, and trying to do all types of bread. Hopefully someday we'll make bagels, but we don't know. <laughs> but um, um, it all depends on what the market, we have to listen to what the people want. So we will make bread that people don't want. Um, so uh, yeah, so now we have, what have we brought in today? We have Moringa bread, which is our latest newest product. Um, before that we brought in, we started using, and I'm really, or we are really focused on more local content. We started to um, add Benny seeds, sesame okay. seeds, in other words, to our breads, just also that we can make them have a more healthier selection. Um, anything else? Yeah, and that's basically it. So it's, we have plain white, brown bread, um, butter bread, butter bread <laughs> which the croissant morphed into butter bread. <laughs> Uh, malt, um, uh, Benny bread, and the latest is Moringa. So five different okay. selections. Yeah. What can you tell me about mm. Sierra Leonean, the Sierra Leonean bread consumer mm. that people might not know? Like, mm -hmm. what are we? I mean, I'm sure you're like bread connoisseurs, so you mm. know about how people <laughs> eat bread and like spread people all over the world. But right. is there like a different way in which we consume? Like, are there things that we like? Is or, or is it that you guys have designed our palate for us, or, or the other way around where we're informing where it is. Um, uh, the recipe? Like, yeah, I, I don't know, but I think bread has become the second staple food in Sierra Leone. So, I mean, oddly enough, um, uh, well, not oddly enough, I mean, it is this, the maybe becoming the staple food, you know, over rice. Um, during what we find, um, based on our sales and, and how things move, uh, what we find is that during the month of Ramadan, which we are in right now, this is our most hectic and the highest, um, um, uh, what you call it, highest? Volume. Volume, volume. in okay. terms of volume. Okay. Um, so it, it just goes to show you, it is, yeah, it just goes to that show you. That is such an odd thing. <clears throat> I mean, it makes sense, Yeah. but mm -hmm. it's also odd. You wouldn't expect people to be eating more bread but, well, they are. when they're fasting. fasting. No, they, but I also get it yeah, because yeah, they have to eat bread, bread in the morning, morning instead of just nanette. Whatever, yeah. yeah. The demand mm -hmm. skyrocket. Oh, substantially. Substantially. Ramadan. Yeah. Okay. Not Christmas, not Easter. No. Ramadan. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are your current, I mean, all businesses in Sierra Leone have human resource issues in yeah. terms of like... That's a given. Yeah, yeah, that's, we all expect that. Yeah. But what are some of the challenges um, that you feel are exclusive to your business or that cut across mm. um, doing business in Sierra Leone that you feel like are really stopping you from reaching the next level or from scaling? Mm. Um, Maybe the goal is to have, I don't know, a red lion in every district, oh, no. you know, cover, like fully cover the market. What are the challenges mm. that keep you from not being able to scale? Human resource wise, is that what you're asking? No, not necessarily human resource. Oh, oh just in general. Human given. given so yeah, like, I know. That we know. Oh, okay, exactly. <laughs> what's the, what's the mm. that we, maybe we don't know. Mm. It's, uh, all right, so bake, baking is one of those kind of um, uh, personalized, yeah, that, that, mm. and I think to replicate the process mm -hmm. or to franchise it mm -hmm. um, is possible. Yeah, but I think a lot of you'd really need to bring in your franchisees mm -hmm. and run them through a rigorous um, training. Operation. Even now, just with vendors, it's hard to control the the, the facilities. Uh, or, how they or sell the, the price list. The so the, 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 I think it's mm. really a mindset in Sierra Leone. Yeah. You very find very few businesses have actually multiplied mm -hmm. right. uh, and created that kind of uh, selling point. Mm -hmm. So it's really a mindset. I think we as a society need to get up to that level where we can actually appreciate mm. uh, and our people can actually mm -hmm. aspire to become owners in a business and work that, that's uh, for themselves. It's really... Key. Uh, it's society at a different level. What are mm. ways that you're trying to be innovative with mm. your products? Like, how are you bringing innovation into bread baking? Oh, like this last one. <laughs> this this one. Again, again, it's really always out of need. Um, because as you say, we haven't and we don't really want to um, bring something that we know the market would not 
buy. Right. So we have to really listen, look, learn. Um, and just recently, um, Flour Mill, which is the only producer of brown flour in Freetown, the Sierra Leone flour mill, closed down for four months at the end of February for rehabilitation of the machines. I mean, they have to do that naturally, but it will take that longer time. And they um, told us, gave us long enough notice, and we were able to secure 150 bags of uh, brown flour. Now the brown flour comes in 50 pound bags that we were able to use, like I, I thought at that time, for at least six to eight weeks, because mm -hmm. it just finished May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so eight weeks, in fact, because brown flour also has a very short shelf life. You can't keep it forever. Um, and so now we have this point where we don't have any brown flour. We have customers who have that palate for brown bread and nothing else. <laughs> and um, uh, Sila and I were scratching our heads wondering, what are we going to do next? Now, we have also secured flour from abroad, but it's not here yet because of the shipping times and all that. We hope it will get here within the next two weeks. But um, at that time, I was thinking, you know what? Um, why don't we try Moringa bread? In fact, when Eva um, Hansels, who is the proprietor of um, Morviga, um, came to bake Morviga biscuits, Moringa biscuits, I would say, here in December last year, I said to her, well, well if you can do biscuits, I can do Moringa bread. Right. And so, you know, the, the uh, seed was planted then, but it was only when <laughs> We, I found myself in this rut of what am I going to give the, the people who need to bring down their, their uh, blood pressure, watch the cholesterol, all these health benefits that brown bread gives them. And I thought, you know, I said to do research on Moringa and, and, and voila, here we are. And uh, now even I are in a, a, a business relationship because she supplies me with uh, the Moringa leaves and I make Moringa bread. <laughs> so, Innovation yeah. is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right. Sierra Leone is a conservative. Yeah, yes, that by too. Nature Tell me about everything. it. <laughs> so, it takes so a long time. Change. They don't like change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 that too. So we have so to really watch it. It's local, listen, learn, and, and introduce slowly, you know, because now that Moringa is in the market, I'm sure, and, and now that, you know, I've, I shouldn't say thankfully, we have this void and they're replacing it with brown yeah. bread. Um, slowly people are going to, you know, pick up uh, and, and like Moringa maybe over brown bread right. or even like it as much as brown bread. Okay, so and you think the people who are buying Moringa now or Moringa bread are those who have like, like the health conscious, the conscious ones, um, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I, my I next know. question yeah. for you is um, what have you learned about doing business as a family yeah. that mm. you think other people need to know mm. um, before they ever, you know, yeah, yeah. Go into this kind of business because it's it's very very unique. Yeah. It's actually, because when you spoil the relationship, mm -hmm. you spoil the family. Only true, true, true. You, you know, it's such a such delicate a thing. Yeah, yeah, delicate situation. So, what have you learned now that you feel like, you know, this is key mm -hmm. to um, working with family? I think for me, and and this is really in our situation here, um, Seal and I. Um, uh, what's the word? We we pride ourselves on the skill sets that we bring to the task. Right. Um, Cyril knows my strengths. I know what his strengths are. And I think even, you know, aside from that, even when our parents were running it, they had different skill sets. You had the one who would go, you know, raise hell. You had the one who would quiet in and talk, know how to talk to a customer. You had the one who would, you know, be able to do the math behind the scenes. So they all had different skills and they relied on those strengths and, and skills. And, and we do that today. And I think really, truly, that's what's kept us, you know, to this point. So it's the diversity and recognizing the strengths that we bring to the table and building on that. Yeah. It's, it's true. I think I think it's it's it's, it's that's quite apt because mm. um, not everyone can be the CEO. No, not you can't have it in one person. Yeah, the, the chief baker. Yeah. You have mm. to recognize. I think in any business, I mm. think you really, I think you really need to know what uh, the innate skills that person yeah. has and exploit it yeah. uh, for the benefit but of the business. Family. Exactly. I mean, families are quite difficult. Yeah. I think um, I think one thing you you learn to quite early on in a family mm. or in any relationship is compromise, yeah. right? You are not going to have your way all, all the time. The time. <laughs> and I think compromise yeah, is true, the key. True, true. But when you have a family, uh, when you have a business and it's a family business, yeah. I think you have to learn to move forward and step back. Right. It's almost a dance. Yes. Constantly. Yeah. Right.
different tell me, selections. Do you know how much bread you mm. bake a day? Um, I can't put a, a number on it because every day is on, on an average it's over 4,000 units okay. on an average because we have uh, about 14 different selections okay. and um, across those we, we bake over 4,000 easily. And you bake how many times a week? Six nights a week. Yeah. We're here from Sunday through Friday night. The only night we don't bake is Saturday night because okay. we're not, we don't, the only day of rest for us is Sunday. And how do you get all the bread out to like the general public? What's your distribution Vision, model? Yeah. Um, well, thankfully, we have the flagship store at Sheikha Stephen Street, so that's um, where people go all the time. Is and that then we the also. Major point that's of sale? the major okay. point of sale. The flagship store at 65 Sheikha Stephen Street. Um, we also have another shop that we opened recently. Well, not recently, it's been a year now, <laughs> um, around the corner from the Lumley Police Station on Spa Road. Okay. Um, and so we have another shop there. So those are the two main shops that we have. But we also have about 18, currently 16, sorry different retailers across the city. Um, so these are the small mom and pop shops that um, we actually deliver to eight in the morning and eight of them come here to pick up their, their bread. And they're on you know different uh, commission rates. Okay. So for those who we deliver to, they get a different rate than those who come here and pick up their bread. And so that helps, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cyril, tell me, what is the ultimate vision, right? So yeah. five years from now, where mm -hmm. do you see, um, where do you want to see Red Lion Bakery? Yeah. What's the plan? <laughs> um, five years from now, I think we need to really improve upon our production. Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's key. Mm -hmm. um, even though we've brought it up to a, a level that um, has really seen some efficiency, right. we need to open up a new facility. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, I think my grandmother's dream, or mm. my mother's and her mother's dream, or mm. her family's dream, was really to go beyond Freetown. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think we've always been a Freetown bakery. Yeah. Um, but I think we really need to think about moving How we beyond go. Freetown. Yeah. Because we, people come from, from all over Sierra Leone mm. to buy bread on Friday night mm -hmm. and run. Take to uh, the provinces, home, yeah. Okay. All over mm. Sierra Leone. Mm. You know? Um, so so be we really need nice. to, yeah. we need to uh, start thinking that way now. That hope strategy, we can actually, yeah. Whether it's through a franchise model, uh, or think some so. sort of other uh, mm. marketing model we yeah. come up with, uh, or distribution model, yeah. uh, I, we hope to do that. So that was yeah. Mr. Cyril Grant and Ms. Michelle, Michelle Jones' cousins running Red Lion yeah. Bakery here in King Tom. Now, they've been in business for 74 years, and of course, that means that you have been <laughs> eating loaves and loaves. And I'm sure they bake like millions and millions <laughs> of bread because Salomon <clears throat> let brave. Mm -hmm. But I think the key takeaway from this conversation is that if you're going to run a family business or going to business with your family, it takes a lot of compromise. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you have a bad attitude <laughs> and you know like for do we see other person wants for do, this is not <coughs> the type of business for you to run. But clearly right, they're doing right. it really, really, really well. It's gone three generations. I think they know what they're doing. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. We'll see you next week on another edition of the Baking Remote Show.